be with you. You're all back where you belong. <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but I'm actually quite emotional not to see everyone in regimented little lines that everyone's kind of, oh, it's just, it's all 
so good. And as I said, I'm surprisingly emotional. It is lovely that we have this opportunity to worship in person and at home as we say our prayers together on this fourth Sunday in Lent. And as I said, you're all back where you belong in your pews. I haven't got my chair back, but at least you guys are back where you belong. We begin by acknowledging that the land we gather on is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee people. We also honor the heritage and gifts of the Métis people. May our actions be guided by our commitment to reconciliation. In the name of God, who makes a way in the wilderness, walks with us, and guides us on our pilgrimage. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we have wandered far from you. We have not trusted your promises. We have ignored your prophets in our own day. We have squandered our inheritance of grace. We have failed to recognize you in our midst. Have mercy on us. Forgive us and turn us again to you. Teach us to follow in your ways. Assure us again of your love and help us to love our neighbor. Amen. Beloved in Christ, the word draws near to you and all who call out to God shall be saved. In Jesus, God comes to you again and again and gathers you under the wings of love. In Jesus' name, your sins are forgiven. God's journey with John, God journeys with you and teaches you how to live in love. Amen. Have you guys ever lost something that was important? Um, sometimes you'll be driving around or someone will knock at your door and you'll see like a lost dog or a lost cat. And you just think of how sad everybody is to be missing that favorite pet. Or maybe you're like me and you put it in a safe place and it's so safe you can't find it again. But it's, you feel sad, you kind, of, you kind of wish that maybe if you've put posters up, you kind of wish every time the phone rings is it someone to tell you that they found your pet or they found what you've lost. And there's kind of, you kind of long for it, you kind of hope for it, you kind of wish you could find it because you miss it. Well, that's a little bit what we're talking about in our reading this morning from Luke's Gospel. We hear a story of a son who grew up and told his dad, Dad, I want you to give me the money that I would get later. I want it now. And he took the money and he went to a faraway place and did whatever he wanted with it. And so the dad was very sad because his son was lost. He had made choices. He'd gone far from home. He'd taken his money. He didn't stay with the family. He took his, funny, took his money and went far away. And he was lost to the family. And so today's story hears about how excited the dad is when the son finally comes home, realizes he's made a very big mistake, and how happy his dad is that his son who is lost comes home. Same way that when you have lost something and have looked and looked and looked for it, you're so relieved and so happy when you have found it. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but it's that, that feeling of how good it feels when the lost has been found when somebody, a friend or a family member that you haven't seen in a long time finally comes home, how good that feels. That's kind of what we're talking about a little bit more in the gospel reading today. Please join with me as we offer the prayer for today. God of compassion, you welcome the wayward and you embrace us all with your mercy. By our baptism, clothe us with garments of your grace and feed us at the table of your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uh, pray, we also offer a prayer for Ukraine. God of peace and justice, would you please join with me as we offer it? God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, 
for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children, at risk and in fear, that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. I would now and like to invite our first reading, please. A reading from the book of Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, today I have rolled away from you the disgrace of Egypt. And so that place is called Gilgal to this day. While the Israelites were camped in Gilgal, they kept the Passover in the evening on the 14th day of the month in the plains of Jericho. On the day after Passover, on that very day, they ate the produce of the land unleavened cakes and parched grain. The manna ceased on the day they ate the produce of the land, and the Israelites no longer had manna. They ate the crops of the land of Canaan that year. The word of the Lord. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Watch over us, loving God, and when we fall into sin, teach us to acknowledge our guilt. May we forgive and be forgiven for the sake of the one who was wounded for our transgressions. Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior. Amen. Our second reading, please. reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. From now on, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Would you please stand? The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Now all of the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. There was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country. And there he squandered his property in desolate living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country, who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Bring a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet and get the fattened calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now when his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has come back safely. And then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never even given me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fattened calf for him. And the father said to him, son, you were always with me, and what is mine is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Would you please be seated? I have to admit, it's lovely to be able to take my mask off when I talk, and I know it makes it easier for some of you to hear, except I'm excited and I know I'm talking too fast this morning. <laughs> trying to slow it down. This is a uh, wonderful parable. And part of what makes it so wonderful is that it's easy to relate. Because whether we like to admit it or not, we have been each person in this parable. We have been the prodigal son who has maybe pushed against expectations, have made choices that family and friends maybe haven't agreed with, have kind of followed our own path and have followed our own way down a path that has maybe taken us places we didn't anticipate or have taken us far from our families. We have not lived up to expectations and we have made choices that have hurt ourselves and the people that we love. So we have been the prodigal son. We have also been the older brother. And I, as the oldest child, can tell you that sometimes it's not fair. I never thought it was fair. If I had to wait to a certain age to do something or had to kind of, there were things I had to do to be able to accomplish something, as soon as I had done it, all my brothers and sisters got to automatically and immediately do it. I never thought that was fair. 
That's all right. I probably was spoiled more than I realized anyway. But when you're a kid, it's, it's very unfair to be patient and they didn't have to wait. We have had times when we have begrudged the choices that the people around us have made. We've held on to grudges. We have been angry that other people have been rewarded or honored or lauded when we haven't. And sometimes it feels like the older brother because we have done everything we're supposed to. We have kept our heads down, we have done our work, and yet other people seem to get the attention. And we have been mean and a little bit spiteful and a little bit holding on to grudges. It's not always easy to admit, but we have been the older brother. We have also had experiences when we have been the loving and caring father. When people have hurt us or have done things that we don't understand or agree with, and we have been the one to swallow our pride and to open our arms and to forgive generously and freely and unconditionally. We have been the ones who have been excited when loved ones or family or friends have, have kind of strayed or have made decisions that we don't understand, and we have been the ones who have welcomed them back when they have apologized or come to themselves or have returned home. We have been that embodiment of God's love. And that is both the beauty and the challenge of this pa passage because we have all been each of those people. And sometimes that's easy. It is easy to be the one who forgives and who doesn't hold a grudge. Sometimes it's hard to be the one who swallows their pride and has to come home or say they're sorry or has to, to shift their life around. Sometimes it's hard and isolating to be the one that holds on to anger and a sense of unfairness and a sense of being overlooked of somehow being hard done by. It's hard to admit that we have been, we've been that person and we've held on to those grudges. And that's why, as I said, this is a lovely passage for us to reflect on and pray about over Lent. But it's also a tough one because it means that sometimes we need to be more honest about choices we've made and the decisions we've made and the way we've treated the people around us. And that's not always easy because probably more often than not, we haven't been the loving father. We've made choices that have hurt ourselves or each other. We have done things and, and kind of walked our own paths or we have been resentful and holding on to grudges. But that is also the gift of this passage is that in acknowledging that no matter who we have been in that story, the father in this story represents God. And so that we are loved in spite of being the older brother or the younger son. We are loved in spite of the choices that we have made, whether to hold on to pain or to grudges or to things that have hurt us, whether we have been able to let go and humble ourselves before God and ask for forgiveness. We are still deeply and dearly loved. And there's no strings on the father's love in this story. He doesn't make the son pay, do penance as a slave for a while or work for him. He doesn't in any way even listen to what the son has to say. As soon as he sees him coming back, he responds. And that is who God is for us as well. Always waiting for us to kind of come back to ourselves, always waiting to come to, to God with the forgiveness that we need, the healing that we need, the peace that we need. And it's not as though God is somehow holding that back. It's often us who can't swallow our pride or our anger or our hurt to turn to receive all of that, to open ourselves up, to acknowledge how we're feeling, to acknowledge the mistakes that we've made, to acknowledge the decisions that we've made. We haven't always been able to do that so that we can receive that love and that forgiveness and that healing that comes with it. And we are, we're on about week four, and I realized it's Mothering Sunday, and I forgot to bring out the pink vestment, so my apologies for those of you who things like that matter. But we have a chance to kind of, we're at a point in our Lenten journey where we can reflect on this passage and acknowledge and spend time thinking about when we have been these different characters in this story. When we have been the one who has been lost, when we are the one who has been found, when we are the one who is holding on to grudges and anger and a sense of unfairness, 
when we have been the loving parent. We have a chance to reflect on this, to pray about this passage, to think about the moments and, and the times in our lives when we have been any of these people, and to repent, to come before God and say we're sorry. We have been mean and spiteful. We have hung on to hurts longer than we needed to. We have made decisions that have turned us away from who you have created us to be, God, or we have made decisions that have taken us down a path that have taken us away from family and friends. And we're sorry. And by doing all of that, we can receive the love that God, it's like God is the parent there with arms wide open just waiting for us to turn back and to come home. It's just waiting for us to put our pride and our hurts aside so that we can receive the forgiveness that is so freely and generously offered. No strings, no conditions. When we can receive the healing that that brings. When we can receive the love because we're not trying to keep a distance. We're not trying to hide parts of ourselves that we're not happy about. We're not holding on to hurts that kind of keeps Keep God's love at a distance. When we can let go of that, when we can drop those barriers, when we can open ourselves up for that forgiveness, it is there waiting for us. And there is still time. We're on our fourth Sunday. We have a couple of more weeks. There is still time for us to receive that forgiveness. There is still time to open ourselves to that healing. And more importantly, there is still more time for us to be embraced by that unconditional and forgiving love that is just waiting for us to open our hearts and our lives to receive it. And so this parable, it's probably one you learned. I remember drawing pictures of this in Sunday school. You know, maybe you had it on a flannel board. Maybe you had it in a picture book. It's a, an easy story to tell. It's an easy story to remember. And it's a powerful story for us to embrace. There is love, there is forgiveness. There is the reminder that there is nowhere that we can go where God isn't ready to welcome us home with loving and forgiveness and hope and healing. And that there is, it's never too late to be able to come home, to be able to turn back. It's waiting for us. We just have to, as the story says, he came to himself and realized that he wasn't where he should be, he wasn't where he could be, and he wasn't where he needed to be. And so he turned back and went home. And we can do that too. We can turn our lives around. We can, we can let go of those things that we have been holding on to. And that love, that forgiveness, that healing, that hope is just waiting for us with open arms, waiting for us to come home. So blessings on the rest of your journey. Blessings with the time as you spend wrestling and, and, and praying over this passage that there is healing and love at the end of those prayers and that there is a renewed vision of who God is calling you to be as you once again turn yourselves home. Amen. Would you please stand and join with me as you are able as we make our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, creator of the universe, dwelling forever beyond time and space. I believe in Jesus Christ who came to live among us and let us see what God is like. I believe in the Holy Spirit sent by God through Jesus to be our guide and comforter. Therefore, I believe in love, in hope, compassion, joy, and faith, forgiveness, and eternal life. Amen.
Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Jesus formed the disciples in the ways of extravagant mercy and profound welcome. Lead your church to be a community marked by forgiveness, hospitality, and celebrations. Sends us to transform a world plagued by fear and condemnations. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make the land to produce the harvest and sustain your entire creation. Equip farmers and farm workers who till the soil. Nourish the earth with ample rainfall and abundant sunshine. Heal grounds tainted by pollution or misuse. Graceful, merciful God, receive our prayer. Countries are divided and leaders often harbor grudges. Reconcile nations that experience conflict, especially Ukraine. Act quickly to bring an end to war. Anoint peacemakers, trained in the art of diplomacy and foster a spirit of collaboration among political rivals. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Your people cry for help in times of distress. Resolve disagreements among family members. Save those experiencing financial hardship. Hear our prayers for those who are sick or grieving or living with chronic health conditions. Console us with the promise that everything can become new. Merciful God, Receive our prayer. Your love comes to us when a table is set and a feast is compared. Bless the feeding ministries of this congregation, especially our community lunch program. Bring an end to hunger in our community and around the world. Merciful God, receive our prayer. The one who was dead is alive again. We give thanks for those who have died. Confident and steadfast love surrounds them. Shelter them in your love until we are gathered at your heavenly banquet. Merciful God, he receive our prayer. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need, for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear friends in Christ, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace. 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 Excellent.
So I invite you to join in uh, with our musical uh, reflection as we prepare the table and get ready to receive the offering. We have been blessed with financial gifts to support this ministry. We have been blessed with the donations that have come in to support our community meal program, with the time and the gifts of people's, of themselves that people have offered so freely to support this ministry here at St. John's. So we offer all of that God, up to God as we sing our offertory hymn together. for the prayer over the gifts. God of mercy and compassion, your word calls us home to faith and love. Accept all we offer you this day. In the name of Christ, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, merciful and almighty God. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you also make all things new in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. So with all the choirs of angels, with all the faithful of every time, and every place we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy one, the beginning and the end. 
the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel. Word of God incarnate. Power of the Most High. One God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. The gifts of God for the people of God. I will invite uh, this side of the church to come forward first, followed by this side second.
Let us offer the prayer after communion together. Giver of life, you enlighten all who come into the world. Fill our hearts with the splendor of your grace that we may perfectly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Go out into the world rejoicing. Meet your creator who awaits you there. Delight in the richness and diversity of the world Christ died to save. Live in the power of the spirit that renews all things. And the blessing of the creator God, the eternal father, the risen son, and the promised Holy Spirit bless you, that you might be a blessing to others today and always. Amen. As I mentioned, it is lovely to see you all back where you belong. Um, and hopefully as the weather improves, because Winter Wonderland has kept, I know, a few folks home, especially at eight o'clock, so be very careful driving home. It is very slippery underfoot, so careful getting to your cars. But we are delighted that we are kind of one step closer um, to whatever normal is gonna look like and feel like moving forward. Just a reminder, the office is open from Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday this week. Just wanted to let you know that I'm actually going to be on retreat for a couple of days. I am uh, heading off to uh, Mount Carmel Monastery in uh, uh, Niagara Falls. We'll leave after supper tonight. I'm going on retreat with some of my Lutheran friends. So we have a lovely little retreat. I'll be back, back in town <laughs> um, Wednesday afternoon. And so if you need anything, give me a call. I check my phone at mealtime. So um, if you call, I can kind of catch messages and respond at that point in time. Um, and my favorite part is not only do we get to worship in that beautiful chapel, which in this weather is going to be very cold, um, but I just get to sit in the pew like you guys do. I don't have to worry about who's doing what. It just it just happens, and so we get to pray four times a day, and we go to meals, and somebody else cooks, somebody else cleans up. It's quite lovely. Um, but as I said, I can check messages on my phone at mealtime, so if anything comes up, just give me a call, and I'll get back to you when I can. Reminder as well that um, many of you picked up your Easter letter, Easter Lenten letter. If you didn't pick it up, it's in the basket and alphabetical order on your way out. Um, also, if you're going to see anybody in the next day or two, pick theirs up as well. So it'll save us a little bit of mailing costs and we'll plunk the rest in the mail tomorrow. But if you're going to see anybody, just grab their letter in the next day or two and that'll help us out. So thank you very much for that. There is a new um, musical Lenten calendar entry for this week. Um, I shared the link in the email that came out last night. Um, it's another beautiful reflection that somebody else has offered on the prodigal son. And again, another beautiful hymn, uh, beautiful um, piece written by Infinitely More that connects all of that together. And so if you haven't had a chance to watch that yet, I invite you to use that as part of your um, Lenten calendar. Each week there is a new video and the bishop will do the last one on Easter Sunday, but it's a beautiful way to kind of mark the weeks as we travel closer to Easter. There is still an opportunity to buy butter tarts and Easter chocolate. Several of you commented last week that when you tried to order, it would only let you order one. We have fixed that, not to worry. It has been fixed, so you can order whatever you need to. Um, there's half dozen and dozen boxes of butter tarts, and as well, there's two different packages um, of Easter chocolates um, that you can look at, one of which uh, sample is at the back door, so you can take a look at what's involved. They're the homemade chocolates by Connie. You know they're fantastic. And for those of you who are visiting family at Easter, they will travel well as well, just so you're thinking. Probably better than the butter tarts will. But as I said, uh, there's still time to order that, um, and that, ha that has been fixed. So you can order whatever you need to and whatever you're looking forward to on the website. Or you can give um, Nicole a call in the office, and she can help you with that as well. One of the initiatives that has come out of the Greater St. Catharines Network, the parishes that are trying to do some uh, some 
walking together in a new way is a, a faith formation piece. And so there is a group of folks who have come together to explore contemplative prayer practices. There is a series of four. It is being done by Zoom. So if you haven't joined yet, there are links, um, videos that you can watch of the previous different prayer practices. There are a number of our colleagues um, from a number of the churches, um, Father Michael from St. Barnabas. I know um, Reverend Dorothy Hewlett from... Um, I can see her church sitting there. It's a beautiful little place just outside of Niagara on the Lake. <gasps> McNabb, uh, beautiful church, thank you. Uh, beautiful church, beautiful community. Um, a number of folks who, who really do live into this kind of contemplative prayer practice, not chatty Cathy's, but um, folks who can do that and are very good at kind of helping others find that kind of grounding and centering. And so if you haven't had an opportunity to be a part of it, there is still time. And if you want to know more about it, there are folks, I know Diane has, has uh, enjoyed this kind of space and this prayer practice, and I don't think she would mind if you had any questions um, about what that's like and what that experience is like. But it's just, it's just a way to kind of ground ourselves and center ourselves in God. And it means you need to stop talking to do it, which is why I don't always do that very well. But you, for those of you who like to talk, you can join me on Wednesday evenings for the Lenten Study. Um, we have been walking through the book, but the questions are also open-ended enough, so if you haven't read the book or didn't pick up the book, you can still take part in the conversation. And in fact, this week we had kind of a really kind of lovely, exciting conversation, and so I can't wait to see what the next one will be. But that's Wednesday nights from about 7 to 8.30. We meet downstairs in the Bishop Fuller Room, and you're more than welcome to join. It doesn't matter if you haven't been to some of the ones before, just come as you're able. And so that's kind of a lovely way to have, um, we've been having some great conversations together. Reminder that community care is continuing to look for, um, is continuing to request our support. And so the most needed items right now are dry cereal, of course, canned uh, protein, so tuna, flakes of ham and poultry. It seems strange to me because I think I always donate tuna when I donate stuff, so it always is a surprise that that's always the one that they need more of. Lots of folks like to enjoy that. Um, dry cereal, um, powdered potato mixes that all you have to do is add water or milk to, to create them. Um, rice and sauces, um, canned vegetables, um, canned stews, and then diapers, the big sizes. Like, not the little newborn in size ones, but the bigger ones. You know, the pull-ups, the size fives, that kind of size. And so, Anything you would buy to feed your family, community care needs to help feed families in our community. And so when you're shopping, if you see some good deals on that, especially canned vegetables, canned proteins, um, they are always um, grateful for any support that we can give to them. We have an upcoming event, Spring Into Hope, that is happening on the front lawn. And so I'm gonna invite you to watch this video. Is an invitation you can pick up that looks very similar to this so that you can share this with a family or a friend or a neighbor. It's an all-ages event and so if you've got kids in your life you'd like to invite and bring, it's, it's kind of an all-ages event and there's crafts and there's snacks and there's a chance for us to visit and to be outside in God's creation and so you may want to bring your own lawn chairs because at this time of the year, the ground's a little soft, so the ones that we take outside usually tend to sink. So if you've got some camp chairs at home or portable lawn chairs, that might be a better choice than using one of ours, but we will have them just in case. But as I said, that's coming up, and it's, it's not a you have to be here from three to five, it's a little bit come as you can, um, participate as you are able, and so we're offering it between three and five on that day, and like the... <laughs> The, the event that we had in December, it's open to the community and it's just an opportunity for us to gather outside and to, to just spend some time together and get ready for our journey through Holy Week towards Easter. And so I hope you'll be able to mark that date and be able to come on out on a Saturday afternoon to be a part of that. 
The last thing is, is that um, we've been able to make some adapting to the service. Again, you guys can sit in your own pews. Um, you can take your mask off when you're talking, which I am enjoying, as you can tell, because excited and talking too fast I am. Um, but one of the things that we're going to be able to move towards uh, soon is we're going to be able to start offering coffee hours again. But we're going to need some feedback from you. So just let me know as you're walking out the door kind of where your comfort level is around that. Because obviously, in order to enjoy a beverage or a snack, you need to take your mask off. So we have to kind of... We don't have to stay six feet apart, but they encourage that we don't cluster shoulder to shoulder around a table to find a happy medium. We're also gonna need to find a way to share coffee because you can't just come up to the opening in the kitchen and just grab a cup. We're, we've been asked to serve it restaurant style, so it needs to be at the tables for us to enjoy. And we also need to think about creating a way to make sure that anybody who's cleaning up and having to wash and to sanitize all this stuff through the dishwasher feels comfortable and safe. So we need to put a plan together for that. And not to mention the fact we haven't needed our coffee hour rotation list in about two years. So we also need to put that together again, to some volunteers. So if you could let me know if you're feeling like that would be a great next step, if you're thinking, well, can we just wait a little bit longer before we're doing stuff without our masks? Just let me know at the back door. We're kind of doing a little informal poll of whoever's been here and getting some feedback and finding out where people's comfort level is with that next step as part of our um, lessening and loosening of some of our COVID protocols. So just let me know at the back door or let one of the wardens know how you're feeling about that or more importantly, if you'd be willing to volunteer to help be a part of that again, because I know we've been missing that, but are we, is everyone feeling ready to take that next step? So just let me know or let one of the wardens know. Yes, ma'am. Restaurant style. So we could have snacks, yes. Yes, but it's just we also have to think of a way to do it carefully so we're not sharing germs as we take our masks off. But again, somebody more creative than I will, because I will get distracted by there's going to be coffee in the building on, on Sundays. <laughs> um, but as I said, just, we just need someone to kind of think out a plan and what, what makes sense and what's the simplest way too, right? Because I could probably come up with something really awkward. But again, what's the simplest way for us to be able to do that so that everyone feels comfortable and that we can still offer and enjoy that hospitality? So... As I said, smarter minds than I need to start working on that. So anyway, mask back on. And I'm going to invite this side of the church to leave first, followed by this side. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. <laughs>